Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos. And if you're following along real time, more or less, we're heading into the 4th of July, 4th of July celebration. And we thought what better time than now to talk about the Francis Scott Key buoy. Francis Scott Key, of course, the author of the what's now the National Anthem. And the buoy, if you're not familiar with it, is a 3,500 pound marker that the Coast Guard sets out each year at about the spot where Key was in a boat watching the bombardment of Fort McHenry in the War of 1812 uh, when he penned his poem that went on to become the anthem. Um, uh, I am pleased, I'm down here at the Coast Guard Yard and I'm gonna be, uh, I've been invited to get on board the Coast Guard Cutter William Tate by its captain and crew to join them in the ceremony that takes place uh, each year when they put the buoy out for the season. They haul it in for the winter and put it out in the spring. Before climbing on board though, have to say a quick thanks. We're at about the mid-year point to everybody who has donated or considering donating. Um, you are keeping these videos alive. You are keeping Baltimore Heritage alive. Thank you sincerely. Um, and also before jumping on board, um, I have to say a word about how uh, uh, Key's poem went on to become the national anthem. Um, he penned the poem uh, on September 13th through 14th, 1814, after watching the bombs bursting in air and seeing the flag at dawn, um, knowing uh, that all was well. Um, he came back to Baltimore to a hotel, the Indian Queen, polished it up a little bit. He was a lawyer and amateur poet, <clears throat> polished it up a little bit, and then then handed, had it printed on September 20th, uh, just a few days later. Um, uh, and he had it, he wrote the poem to be sung to the tune of a, a song called The Anacreonic or To Anacreon in Heaven. It was a song written in a gentleman's club in England, probably a drinking song that was wildly popular both in England and in America. So when the words were printed down, he could just say, well, sing this to the tune of Anacreon in Heaven and everybody would know how to do it. It became wildly popular almost immediately as a symbol of what we could do under our flag together in the face of adversity, helping our neighbors here in Baltimore. Um, and as the 1800s went on, military units began uh, regularly uh, singing the song at uh, parades and other ceremonies. In the late 1800s, the U.S. Navy officially adopted it as the Navy's song. Um, maybe that's because it was born out of a naval battle. Maybe it's because the Naval Academy is here in Maryland, in Annapolis, uh, but they adopted it. In 1916, President Woodrow Wilson uh, decreed that all military units should play it where appropriate at their ceremonies. He has a connection, of course, to Maryland and Baltimore, going to graduate school at Johns Hopkins University. If you're getting a theme here of Marylanders uh, inching towards the goal line of getting Key's poem adopted as our anthem, that's what's going on. And in 1918, two years later, a gentleman, uh, Congressman Linthicum, again from Maryland, proposed, uh, set a bill in Congress to uh, have the poem, the now song, the Star Spangled Banner, uh, as our anthem, and it failed. It failed not once, but five times. He kept getting reelected, kept trying, but it was only on the sixth time that it finally passed. Um, but it did finally pass with the help of two other sources. One is a cartoonist, Robert Ripley. He he had a nationally syndicated cartoon called Ripley's Believe It or Not, and he penned a cartoon that said, Believe It or Not, America Has No Anthem. That got a big uh, rouse out of folks. And then the Veterans of Foreign Wars uh, had a petition campaign, five million signatures coming in, urging Congress to adopt uh, the Star Spangled Banner as the national anthem. And in 1931, Congress finally did act, only after having two different singers come in and perform versions of it to make sure it wasn't too difficult for the average person to sing. Apparently it wasn't. Uh, and then in 1931, Herbert Hoover, Hoover signs the bill making it our anthem. And it has been that ever since. One final word on the buoy uh, that's going to be set in the water today. Um, it was first set out in 1914 on the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Baltimore, but pulled up after that ceremony ended. It's first, uh, first was permanently installed in 1981. The Coast Guard, I think wisely, uh, put it outside of the shipping channel. You do not 
one a 3,500 pound uh, buoy. Even though it is painted in the uh, red, white, and blue flag colors, you do not want that in the middle of the shipping channel. There is some debate today over how close uh, the buoy is to where Key actually was, but we are gonna leave that to the scholars. Um, and ever since 1981, the Coast Guard has uh, had a ceremony to lay the buoy out in the water each year. And I am pleased to now join the captain and crew of the U.S. Coast Guard Cutter, William Tate, uh, to get out there and be part of this uh, really extraordinary experience. All right, on board, here we go. All right, hello. Well, we made it out here. We are at the mouth of the Patapsco River, uh, right near the Key Bridge where it meets the bay. And uh, behind me is the enormous crane that is going to lift the uh, lift this big buoy off of what's called the buoy deck, uh, swing it out over the edge, and then lower it uh, into the water. Um, I'm going to go try to get a good view so we can see the, uh, the action as it unfolds. All right, if you can hear this, um, they have cleared the buoy deck. Uh, there is a Coast Guard helicopter flying over, and the uh, Coast Guard crew here has uh, got this enormous strap onto the buoy and is now uh, hauling it up with an, uh, an enormous crane. Um, uh, they have uh, asked all of us non-Coast Guard crew to uh, get clear of what they call the buoy deck. And uh, I can see why now. This 3,500 pound, enormously tall uh, buoy is, is uh, going upwards, upwards, upwards. Okay, we're swinging, swinging out over the edge here. You can see the, I believe it's a Coast Guard helicopter. We got all sorts of vessels out here. Here behind me, we got in these chains going down, sliding across the deck of the ship. Set the buoy! We've got the command to set the buoy. The buoy has successfully been set. There is nothing left holding it to the ship. And now we're playing the Star Spangled Banner, our national anthem. anthem is over. I cannot imagine a more fitting tribute to this buoy. Happy 4th of July, everyone.